Hello. Hey guys, um, I'm Frank and this is Determining Hybridization Made Easy. And today I'm going to be going over this molecule here, Lipitor-ish. Um, I added this fragment here. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how I figure out the hybridization of these atoms. And then... Hi guys, I'm Lyndon and I'll be looking at salicylic halamide. I apologize if I said that wrong but I'll just be kind of doing the same thing after Frank does his molecule. Mm -hmm. Yep, so first off, if you're watching this video, make sure you've seen our, our overview series, uh, SP3, SP2, SP hybridization, made easy. It's a two-part series, the link of which we'll put in the cards over here, if you haven't seen it yet. It gives you a nice little overview about um, hybridization that you kind of need in order to do this problem really quickly. All right, so be sure to check that out first. And we want you guys to actually hit pause and try this problem out first on your own and then come back and do it with us and see if you got the right answers or not. Yeah. All right. So, hit pause. I don't want to pause. I don't need a stinking pause button. <laughs> nah. All right, welcome back. Did you try it out? Uh, well, let's go over Lipitor-ish. Um, so, you probably heard in lecture to do the, the way that they, they typically teach it is to do steric number minus one. Well, I don't quite do it that way, and I'm going to actually show you guys how I do it instead. So, um, the way I do it, um, the first thing you have to ask yourself when you analyze each atom is, what's the maximum number of pi bonds that this atom or each of their atoms can make? And why is the number of pi bonds so important? Well, the number of pi bonds that your atom can make, or the maximum number it can make, determines how many p orbitals that are going to be occupied and unable to hybridize. Okay. So for this video, we're not going to think about the electrons in the orbitals. I'm actually going to erase the 1s, because we don't even need to care about that. For this way of thinking about hybridization, I'm going to erase the 2s as well. So we'll get rid of all of this. Okay, so what's the maximum number of pi bonds your atom can make? Well, if you're atom can make one pi bond, it's going to look like this, and it's going to be bonded with another atom. So in order to set up that pi bond, you have to use a py orbital, or another orbital like a pz, to set that up. So your py is out of play. It's unavailable, and you've sacrificed it, essentially. So what are you left with? An s and two p's. So your atom has to be sp2. And then if your atom can make two pi bonds mac at maximum, then it's going to look like this. And in order to form those two pi bonds, this one over here, and this one that's going into the board and out of the board, well, you had to use two p orbitals, your py and your pz. So both of these are knocked out. You've sacrificed both of them. So what's left? Just s and just p. So your hybridization has to be just sp. Okay? So now let's apply that to this guy. So atom A, what's the maximum number of pi bonds it can make? Well, if you just do steric number minus one, you'd have one, two, three, four, for a steric number, minus 1, and that's 3, you get sp3. But you have to look out for resonance. So can this oxygen resonate and create more pi bonds? Well, can it go this way? No, because hydrogen can only make one bond. But it can go this way and make a double bond here, because this carbon already has four bonds, but this bond can go up to the oxygen. So as a result, you'd have a pi bond here after you resonate. So that knocks out, let's say, the py orbital. This is gone, and all it's left with is S and 2Ps. So atom A has to be SP2. Okay, now let's do atom E actually. I'm gonna skip to E. Uh, can this oxygen resonate? What's the maximum number of pi bonds it can make? Well, hopefully you realize it's actually zero. It does have lone pairs, but they can't come down over here because this carbon atom can't accept another bond. There's a hidden bond with hydrogen already here. And if it if you try making a new bond with it, well, it can't give any bonds away, so it can't sustain a pi bond. So this oxygen here is actually going to have all three pure orb orbitals available to hybridize with its S, and it's going to create uh, four sp3 orbitals. So this is actually sp3. Okay, next, atom B. What would you think? Maximum number of pi bonds is going to be one pi bond. It has lone pairs. Can they go up like this? No, they can't, because the carbon has hydrogens, hydrogens here. So it already has four bonds, and can't give away any bonds. But, if you go down, here, this that'll overload this carbon with too many bonds, but this bond here can resonate onto here. As a result of that, 
this nitrogen is going to have a pi bond here. Okay? And the same is true for if nitrogen resonated this way to the right. That would also create another pi bond. So, but it can only go one way or the other. So, the maximum number of pi bonds this nitrogen can make is just one. So, Py is occupied or sacrificed. All that's left is two Ps and S. So this is going to be sp2 as well. Yeah, sp2, sp2. Oh no, sp3. And then atom C. Okay, this oxygen has lone pairs, and it has a double bond here already. So it already has one pi bond. Can it make another one? Well, this is a common mistake. Students think that this electron can come down here, but no. Carbonyls or C double bond O's can only suck electrons up. So they can't send electrons down, and also if you send this one down, this carbon is going to explode. It already has four bonds, and it can't handle any more bonds. So this oxygen is stuck. It only can make one maximum pi bond, or one pi bond at maximum. So what's left? Sacrifice your Py, Sb2. So next, atom D. All right, uh, nitrogen, what do you think? Well. Maximum number of pi bonds it can make. It looks like it's it's just uh, sp3 because it has uh, four groups around it and, the, and it's all single bonds, no pi bonds. But this lone pair here can resonate over here, or it can resonate over here. If it goes here, this bond can move on to this carbon, forming a double bond here and then a negative charge here. If this goes over here, this bond can move on to the oxygen. So. The maximum number of pi bonds it can make is still one because it can either move here or here, but not both. Uh, and it can't go here because that's a hydrogen. So this uh, nitrogen has one p orbital sacrifice in order to set up bonding. So it is sp2 once again because that's all you're left with. One s, two p's. And now this part. I added this fragment into Lipitor because this is a common uh, problem. So this nitrogen, this nitrogen, this nitrogen. What is the hybridization? Well, it looks like this nitrogen is sp2 because it has one pi bond, right? And the same goes for this one. It only has one pi bond, right? But what we have to look out for is that nitrogen has a lone pair and it can resonate in to create a triple bond with nitrogen. And then as a result, that'll knock off this bond. Actually, wait a second. I can't do that, actually. Because if I do that, if I did this, um, well, this is okay, but I can't do this because nitrogen is already negative and it have a double negative charge, which you can't do. So I would say uh, because you can't do that, then you can't do this because by doing this, nitrogen will have five bonds. That's way too much. So actually, this nitrogen here is just sp2. But this nitrogen here has two pi bonds. So it's not quite this setup because it has a pi bond on each side. But essentially, if you drag the pz orbital to here and you replace these with nitrogens, that's what would be happening here. So this nitrogen has two pi bonds. It used up two of its p orbitals. All that's left is s and a p. So this is sp. Now, if we go back to this one, this nitrogen can resonate in. Okay, the negative nitrogen can bring can come in and make a bond, and then this bond can go onto the nitrogen, bumping electrons on him and he, he would become negative. So this nitrogen can actually make a triple bond, so it is sp as well. All right, hopefully that all made sense to you guys, but uh, to recap, all you need to do is focus on what's the maximum number of pi bonds your atom can make, because the maximum number of pi bonds determines the number of p orbitals that are available to hybridize and give you your hybridization. All right, so now I'm gonna hand it over to Linden and he's gonna walk through the next molecule, which I can't say the name of, Salus. Halamide, something like that. All right, guys, like Frank said, I'm gonna work on a second problem for all of you guys. And I just wanna restate what Frank said earlier. We're gonna be looking at if these atoms can form pi bonds, because if they can, then they're sacrificing a p orbital that doesn't go into hybridization. And so right off the bat, we're gonna start, we're gonna start with atom A, which is a CH3, or it's points of the carbon, but it's, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna start with atom A, that this points to a carbon, it's bonded to three hydrogens and another carbon. And carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, so it can't form any bonds um, at this state. And so right off the bat, we know that this CH3 is just um, sp th sp3 hybridized. Um, and this is pretty common for CH3 groups because they can't really participate in resonance. 
And so next we'll go to the other side of the molecule at atom B. And so the first thing I'm going to do is draw in the lone pairs if they are not already drawn in. And these are important obviously because resonance um, is a factor in terms of hybridization. And so can this form another pi bond? And we see yes it can because these lone pairs can come down forming a double bond here but which overloads this carbon but this bond can then go onto this carbon as a lone pair. And also, just a quick note, this could also go to this bond, which would push this up into the carbonyl, which is also a valid, um, a valid form of resonance. And so because this has a, do a double bond then, and we lose a lone pair, it is now sp2 hybridized. And like Frank said, this is kind of why uh, the steric number minus one doesn't really work all the time, because you have to account for resonance. And that's really the tricky part about these types of problems. And so moving on to atom C, again, drawing in the lone pairs. And then, once again, can it participate in resonance? Or in other words, can it sacrifice one of its p orbitals to form a double bond? Or triple bond, if there's two p, p orbitals being sacrificed. And so we see if we just push these lone pairs here, this overloads this carbon, but this can move up to this oxygen um, to form a double bond here, which is also a valid form of resonance. And so, kind of similar to this problem here, um, this will now be sp2 hybridized. And this is a pretty common mechanism for electron donating groups, such as oxygen. And so you'll see this a lot, and just with practice, um, you'll get used to pushing the electrons over and seeing if a resonance form is valid. And so now, we're going to move all the way up to atom D, which is a carbon with a double bond. There are no lone pairs. And so, uh, we want to see if there are forms of resonance possible for this atom and there's no lone pairs so we can't really do anything and so it's kind of going to stay as it is and it has a double bond here and so it's sp2 hybridized. Okay moving on to atom E which is the second to last one. It's an oxygen. First thing I'm going to do is draw on the lone pairs and Frank also had this type of um, I guess setup but it's carbonyl oxygen, and a lot of students think that you can push these electrons down here to form a triple bond. That's incorrect because this is actually an electron withdrawing group. But that doesn't mean that there's no resonance forms because this nitrogen here, adjacent to it, has a lone pair. And this lone pair can travel down and push this bond up to the carbonyl oxygen uh, to give you a form of resonance. And so while that is a form of resonance, it's not going to uh, make it sp3 hybridized because we know the original form is already sp2 hybridized and so you're not you're never going to take a step back and go to um, not sacrificing that p orbital and so this is still sp2 hybridized even though there's a resonance structure possible and so you just want to make sure that you're using the maximum amount of pi bonds that the atom can make um, when looking at this type of structure so the last one out of f again lone pairs drawn really poorly and see if any resonance structures are possible and so uh, you can't really push these lone pairs here because this carbon will be overloaded and uh, the bond or electrons can't go anywhere else and so this is essentially going to have no resonance structures possible even though it's an electron donating group and so you can't just assume that all oxygens that are donating groups can push their electrons somewhere you have to make sure and so this is just going to be sp3 hybridized so atom F, because there are no resonance structures, are not going to have any of its p orbitals participate in any bonding. And so one s orbital and three of its p orbitals are going to create uh, sp3 hybridized orbitals. And so that's the end of this problem. Um, if you got the correct answer, then good job. But hopefully our explanation made sense. And same with Frank's uh, example. All right, thanks for watching, guys. So hopefully that made more sense to you. And just remember, maximum number of pi bonds number of pure ability to sacrifice and that's all you really need to know so you don't need to worry about steric numbers at all okay so if you like this video make sure you like it down there for us that'd be awesome uh hit subscribe or the bell button if you want to get notified when we make new videos and tell your friends of course if you found this video helpful um and if you're looking for the clutch prep coupon code for this period it expires on december 31st and if you don't know who clutch prep is there's a video i made earlier this year that i'll find the cards right here they're an awesome resource for studying uh for any class basically and the coupon code is orgamadeeasy-h.
Hex. Mm-hmm. H-E-X. H-E-X, like hexing. So just Hex. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. If you want to help support these videos and help support us, you can do so on our Patreon page. Uh, if you donate as little as $1.50 a month, $2. And the link I'll also put down below and the cards right here. Okay? So, thanks for watching. See you guys in our next video. Alright, bye.